All right, today's video, we're going to branch into some survival theme mechanics. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we create these mechanics and how they interact with the gameplay system. Uh, and the objective is really to create this uh, widget in the bottom left hand corner where our player statistics are going to be shown to the player so they can monitor them and take the appropriate action. So let's start with a little bit about the survival mechanics. Typically in survival based games, you have both direct and indirect attributes. So your direct attributes would be your health uh, and your indirect attribute would be things like food and water, um, maybe temperature, etc. So the indirect attributes are sort of constantly depleting either over time or as you perform activities. And then the player must actively manage topping off those attributes by eating food or drinking uh, to save off starvation or dehydration. And then once those uh, levels get low enough, they can trigger impacts on your primary attributes. Um, and so that's what the player mechanic is basically centered around. So players will consume the items, the food that's either crafted or harvested, and then those those metrics will uh, will either bounce right back up or will will uh, grow over time or re re replenish over time. Uh, those first two are what we're going to talk about in this video. And in our second video, we're going to add uh, some conditions that can directly impact our primary attribute health, such as burning or being poisoned, uh, things that might come at you from the environment, uh, and conditions that can uh, be applied to either increase or decrease the, uh, the rate at which the indirect attributes are uh, declining such as being sick or dehydrated or cold. Um, and so for this video, we're going to cover the first two. Uh, and then in the second video, we'll pick it up and we'll cover off the conditions. So let's talk about creating the attributes and the attributes. Our indirect attributes uh, are going to be compiled together in a uh, attribute set that we're calling Lyra Survival Attributes. And they will be uh, active upon with either gameplay effects, which will affect the attributes in this attribute set, or gameplay abilities. And so things that you do, uh, such as consuming an item, will typically be triggered through a gameplay ability, which would then apply a gameplay effect to the attribute. And things that are kind of happening in the background are going to be applied using a gameplay effect. Anytime our indirect attributes are changing, uh, we're going to broadcast the on change events and the UI is going to pick up those on change events and then update the various graphs and structures. So that's the basics of the system. We're very heavily using the gameplay ability system uh, and then we're broadcasting those changes over to the UI. So for our survival based theme attributes, um, the Lyra health attribute set is this dark green. You already have in your project max health, health, a damage, and a heal, uh, all defined inside the Lyra health attribute set. We're going to be creating our survival attribute set, and we're going to have four sets. We're going to have maximum hunger and hunger, which is current hunger, and then a stateless or transient attribute called food. So food gets applied to reduce hunger, uh, and then it's basically consumed. So you don't carry any food with you. You don't have any food. It's simply a stateless thing that is applied to hunger. We'll also have thirst. So same concept. We'll have a max thirst, a current thirst. And then when we drink, that will get applied to thirst. We have stamina. And then that's going to get um, affected by rest. So the more rest we have, our stamina will go back up. And then the fourth one we thought was just for fun. Um, we created another one called smell and smell might affect your ability to stealth. Maybe uh, enemies sense you faster, uh, the smellier you are. And then we're going to have a transient attribute called clean, uh, which will get applied when you swim in the lake or, you know, get wet. It'll uh, remove some of the smell off your character. So that's the way we've set up the four survival themes for this video. 
We've gone ahead and posted the attribute set in the description of this video. So you don't have to worry about the C++ portion of this video. We just gone ahead and posted that, which means you should just be able to copy it. It's too hard to try to write C++ off a video and have you guys copy it also. That should be there. You can just download it off the description. But that's the start, right? The survival set where we define our hunger, thirst, stamina, and smell. We define our food, drink, rest, and clean attributes. The one thing you will have to do is once you've created that uh, survival set or have incorporated that into your project, uh, you're gonna wanna go into your Lyra player state. And that's where a Lyra has the ability system components attached to the player state. And then right here below the health set and the combat set, you can go ahead and create a survival set. So just mimic those two lines of code. You go over to the header file, you create a variable called survival set, and then you do the create default sub, -job, sub object just like it is here. Uh, you'll do that inside your own code so that we're not instructed with anything else you might have done in the player state. And once you've done those two, you should be able to recompile and the new survival attribute sets should be active inside your project. So the way to test that, and something we're gonna to need to do is we create, start creating your uh, gameplay effects. So if you create a gameplay effect called hunger, you can set it to infinite and you can have it tick however you want. Again, this can get as complicated as logic as you like. This is just for demonstration purposes. So every half a second, hunger is going to tick. It's going to uh, impact the hunger attribute set, which is coming out of our survival set. And it's going to add one to hunger. So this one is basically every half a second, hunger is going up by one. On the food side of that equation, we create another gameplay effect called food. This one gets applied instantly when you call it, it will trigger the Lyra survival set food and it will add whatever value we pass in using this gameplay tag. So we create a gameplay tag called set by caller food. We set this magnitude to set by caller and then it will add to food whatever we pass in through this tag. So you'll do that for hunger and food You'll do it for thirst and drink, stamina and rest, smell and clean. So you'll actually do this exact same setup. You can vary it for your own purposes, but basically replicating that, um, you'll end up creating four tags for the set by callers, and you'll end up creating four of these uh, instant gameplay effects and four infinite ticking gameplay effects. So the next thing you need to do in order to trigger your four survival attributes is go ahead and create uh, an ability set. You can create that wherever you want. That ability set will have gameplay effects in an array. And you'll slot in each of the gameplay effects that you want to have occurring. And then in your hero data, wherever you're using for your project, um, you'll go ahead and add an ability set and that's the survival set. So we're taking these four of the eight and we're putting them into this set and saying, okay, go ahead and, and start those gameplay effects on the player when they start the game. And so that means as soon as we're up and running, they will start ticking away and they'll start to have those attributes to, uh, rising or climbing. All right, so that's all there is to set up the basic mechanic. The next thing we need to do is enable the UI so you can actually see the result of that math that's going on in the background. And so ignore the top half of this. We're gonna be doing that in the next video, the conditions. Uh, but here in the middle of the screen, you'll see that we've got four bars that are basically representing our current hunger, thirst, stamina, and smell. And we've just gone ahead and created a very simple material 
that is a dynamic material and it uses a, a percentage variable to basically fill up or, or, or drain these, these four pillars. Obviously, the visual effects that you want to apply are totally up to you. This was just done for prototype purposes, um, but it gets the point across. So we're going to focus on creating these four in the middle. So similarly to the attribute set, we've gone ahead and included the character status widget in the, uh, in the description for the code. And that's because in that C++ code is where we're going to do all of the work around exposing the images from the widget, creating and managing the dynamic material, and binding all of the, uh, all of the uh, events coming over from the Lyra uh, action set. So go ahead and pull that code. Now you'll note that our character status widget inherits from common user widget. And then our widget in the editor basically is parented to this character status widget, which expects that these four variables, which are here, are defined. So when you do construct your visual, make sure you have an image for each of these four, or else this won't compile because it's gonna to try to bind this image to this name inside your blueprint. So if we make sure those four are the same as those four, everything else you can do around here any way and style you like, but the important element is that you have four images that are gonna be bound to these four properties in the C++ class. The dynamic material, the uh, you can again create it any way you like. The important part of the dynamic material is this fill percentage. So as we change this value, the bars will adjust between the filled color and the empty color. And so this is really the important part. You can do anything you want in your material as long as you have a fill percentage uh, scalar parameter that will range from zero to one. Uh, and that's basically how we control the rest of this logic. Next, you go into your HUD layout and you're going to need to add an extension point. Um, so that means that somewhere on your screen, um, what we chose to do is put a vertical box around this uh, elimination feed and then put the character stats below it. So these two extension points are inside a vertical box. And then for the extension point here for character status, we created a new uh, tag called hud.slot.characterStatus. And so that exposes on the HUD the location we want the character screen to show up. After that, you can go over into your experience. And in your experience, you will uh, go down to the add widget actions. And in your array of widgets to add, you're going to add a new widget, our character status, and you're going to tell it which slot you want it to go into, which is the slot that you just did on the previous step. All right, so with the attribute set set up, the UI set up, and the code to connect the two, the last thing we need to do is a, a way to sort of simulate eating food. Um, so for that, we've just set up some input actions. And uh, there are plenty of videos on input actions, but basically we created a gameplay ability called eat. That is our test ability. That is what it's going to simulate the character consuming food, drinking, doing whatever they have to do to manage the, the attribute. Uh, we created an input action called eat. We added that into our input uh, mappings configuration. We created our Lyra input config, uh, which sets the uh, input tag. And then finally, we have our ability set, which grants the ability and links the ability to the actual uh, input 
uh, tag. So you need all five classes to be updated in one shape or another. This is brand new, this is brand new. You probably have these two already and you probably have one of these already. So you can just add three entries you need into those three. Uh, we're using the O key just for testing purposes. And this is the fundamental application inside the gameplay ability is when you're ready to have your character replenish their attribute such as hunger or thirst uh, you'll make a outgoing gameplay effect using the gameplay effect that you want so in this case drinking you will assign it the value the magnitude so i'm just doing a rand for testing i'm doing random between two and seven we create the spec handle we do we make sure the tag is the set by caller drink tag so this class has this tag inside of it once we create that, we can apply the gameplay effect spec to owner and pass it this effect spec handle, and that's it. So wherever you want to run your eat, drink, clean, rest, uh, these are the four nodes that you'll need inside your gameplay ability. All right, so with that taken care of, we're going to go into editor, um, show you how it looks, then we'll go into the C++ code just navigate around it a little bit to give you some orientation to the actual code logic. All right, over in the editor, uh, as I said, you're gonna have each of your gameplay effects. Um, actually, I don't need this one anymore. I got rid of that. Um, go to our ability first and I'll show you our ability. So when we perform our test ability called eat. So when we eat, and I'm gonna go take this cool down off because it's not needed. Uh, we're gonna commit our ability and then we're basically gonna run a sequence where we are calling the food version with a random range. This one we're actually uh, print stringing it to make sure it happened. Then we repeat that for drink. We repeat that for rest. And we repeat that for clean. And again, all the variables are just randomized to give us a little bit of a different interaction. And that's our gameplay ability eat, which we have mapped to the O key. Um, we go into that. We also have our gameplay effects. So our hunger every half a second adding one and i think our drink i did thirst thirst i have running every 0.6 and adding 1.5 and so let's go ahead and see how that works all right and so as we enter the game you can notice that the uh, hunger, thirst are going up. Stamina is coming down. I just wanted to show the difference that you could have them go up or down. Uh, and then smell is going up the fastest. And so if I were to now simulate our action, I'm going to press the O key to eat, which will actually not only eat, but it'll affect all of them. You'll see that all of the bars took a set. And if I hit it multiple times, you can see I can basically work my way back to the beginning as if I ate, drank, and rested a fair amount. So in a normal game, they wouldn't be moving nearly this fast, but from a testing perspective, it shows you that the bars are, are, uh, are decreasing or increasing. Uh, and then as I consume food, it has an immediate effect on the bar. Again, we could have done that as a sort of uh, improvement over time is it to have that ticking instead of just completing instantaneously. That's totally up to you and how you set up those gameplay uh, effects. But then once the bars hit the maximum, like thirst and smell and food is about maxed, 
they'll just sit there at max. They won't they won't tick anymore. They won't go any higher. And we're basically at completely uh, done. All right, so let's take a look at the C++ code next. All right, these are the two uh, sets of files that we provided in the description. Uh, I'll just go over them quickly. Uh, you basically have your uh, survival set, which is a Lyra attribute set. You use the macro to define your uh, attributes, both your set. So here's our food, drink, rest, and clean. We define our on hunger change, thirst, stamina, and smell change, max thirst, smell change. So we do the regular and we do the on. We did this out of food one. I haven't implemented it yet, but you can do other things that you can broadcast. You replicate each of those from client to server or from server to client. And so we have the on rep for each of them. We've got the pre and post gameplay effects, the attribute changes and the clamp. And then down here, we have the actual uh, gameplay attributes for hunger, max hunger with the on rep. Right, so these are replicated using these reps. And we have some uh, floats that we store values in the logic. And here's our transient uh, gameplay attributes of food, drink, rest, and clean. So that's the header file. Again, it's common and well. You can just kind of read through it. It's pretty logical. In the constructor, we set our max hunger thirst, stamina, and smell. We set stamina to be at 100 to begin with. So here's an example of where we set hunger to be zero, but we set stamina to start at 100. Uh, we're just initializing uh, these here. Here's our lifetime replicated uh, to rep these using our on rep notify. And then each of the replications. So this repeats itself over and over again. So on rep of hunger, we do the uh, rep notify macro. Then we uh, basically take the current hunger minus the old value to determine how much magnitude. So what are we now? What were we before? Um, and then we can broadcast the on hunger changed. If we were out of food, we broadcast the food. We basically set the food so that the next time around we would broadcast it one time only. Thirst is the same, but without the food element. Here's the stamina replication, stamina being changed. Here's the smell change replication. Here's the max. These are just repetitive. And here's the broadcast for that. And here's the broadcast for that and that. And then the real logic is kind of inside these pre and post games. So in the pre is where we save all the uh, attributes of the existing before we make any changes. And then in post, um, we basically kind of work through and clamp our values. So there's the food and hunger. And what you'll note is that when we get food, this is a good example. When a gameplay effect affects food, what we're going to do is we're going to set hunger to being our current hunger minus food. So we're we're decreasing our hunger by the food amount and then clamping it between the min and max of hunger. That's different in, or that's the same here for, uh, and then these are just hunger, uh, regular changes to hunger and regular changes to max. Drink is the same as hunger. Stamina is a plus instead of a minus. So when you, uh, when you rest, you get more stamina as opposed to when you drink, you lose thirst. Uh, and then we're broadcasting all these changes here. And then these are pretty simple. Uh, you can read through those at your leisure. But that's basically the logic of the attribute set. You can read through the code. Note the important thing is that it's going to broadcast the appropriate changes from the gameplay effects, which then get picked up in the character status widget. So 
Over here, we have the corresponding receiving events and the signatures of these have to match. So these are the signatures that have to match um, this signature right here. So that is a multicast six perm, and these are the perms. So because this is a multicast six perm, that's how you determine what those need to be. And then in our logic, um, we basically have the initialize routine where we go ahead and get the survival set. So everything to this point is simply getting the player controller, getting the player state, getting the ability system, and then finally getting the attribute set um, and caching that survival attribute set. Then we do our bindings. So here's where we bind the uh, on hunger change event that's going to come over from the survival set into the on hunger changed here in this uh, class. Here's where we create our dynamic materials. So once we initialize, we will have bound our events. We will have created our dynamic materials. And then as those events occur, we simply have to do one thing. We take the dynamic material, we set its scalar value or fill percentage to the percent, which is the new value for hunger uh, divided by maximum hunger. And then you just repeat that for um, thirst, stamina, and smell. And it's important is these ones, the changing of the values, it's new value over max because the new value coming in is the thirst or the hunger. But you'll note down here when the max changes, we've flipped this logic. It is the current hunger over the new value, i.e. the new max hunger. The current value of thirst over the new value max thirst. So these just have this uh, flipped left or right. And that's it. So those two files plus the changes that you have to do in the Widgets, et cetera, should enable you to set up a starter survival system.